we are back and fresh kills. If you're sleeping on this movie, don't. Go to Amazon Prime right now and rent this bad boy. You can rent it for 48 hours or you can digitally download this movie. This is the directorial debut for Jennifer Esposito. And I will say this, chef's kiss. This movie was absolutely fantastic. It was gritty. Uh, it, it told the story of a crime family uh, set in Staten Island. And, uh, it, but it was told from the perspective of the women of the family that pretended and turned a blind eye to what was going on, even though they all knew what was going on. The acting in this was stellar. Emily Bader crushed it. The raw emotion that would come out of her in the scenes that she was in. Some of the best acting in the world is when an actor doesn't have to say anything at all and can give a look or an emotional reaction. And you didn't even have to write dialogue for this for this actress. She destroyed this role. Uh, uh, Jennifer Esposito, she was the writer, director. She produced this movie, uh, even had to... Uh, do a mortgage on her house to finish it. Her acting in this thing is just so on point. Uh, there's a moment at the end of the film, and I'm not going to give anything away because you really want to see this, but you'll know, if you come back to this video, you'll know exactly the moment at the end of the film where, once again, doesn't have to say a line of dialogue, just gives the look. And I was in tears. I was in tears at that moment. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Odessa Azian, I hope I said that correctly. I don't want to butcher some of these names. Crushed it. Uh, I graduated high school in 1993, so when she was 1993, the movie is non-linear, where it, it, it starts off uh, when, the, when they're kids, uh, and then it goes to when they're, oh, it jumps, like 1985, 87, then 93, and then 2001. And so it, it jumps around, but uh, uh, when, it, when they captured the moments, uh, uh, Jennifer Esposito captured the moments. It's so hard to make an independent film and also be a time, uh, uh, um, a period of time uh, to replicate the cars, to replicate the, the, the furniture, to, uh, to capture those moments in time. It, it's, it's usually extremely expensive to replicate eras, um, but this was done perfectly. Even the cars, they, uh, there was one scene, it's not a spoiler, but they were gifted a car. One of the daughters was gifted a car, and, and then another character was dif uh, gifted a car played by, I think it was Nicholas Cirillo, uh, and they Anyway, the cars, I was like, oh, dude, I, w I remember when that is 1993 or whatever, I, I wanted that car. You know, like everybody wanted that car. Um, uh, and I, I want to feel like it was, uh, I want to say it was either like a Plymouth Laser or a, a, Le a LeBaron. I can't, I can't remember. I, was, I don't know, but it was, it, was, it was the car that everyone wanted in the 90s. And, but, you know, like they're all turning a blind eye. There's obviously criminal stuff going on because they drop these little nuggets. Uh, but all these women are trying to deal with it. And Emily Bader, who played Rose, her character doesn't want to be a part of this family. And she's trying to do everything she can to get out. But just like, you know, you hear the classic line, I try to get out, but they pull me back in. It's, it's almost the same thing. Um, but the characters are very pure you really can connect to them where you can't really connect with uh, people, certain characters from The Sopranos or certain characters from Goodfellas because they do such horrible things that you don't, you can't go, okay, well, I, I get that that mob stuff happens, but uh, I can't really connect to it. But with these women, you can connect with the fact that they're like, oh, shit, everything's good. Let's have pancakes. Everything's good, you know. Um, and just when, when the Rose character feels like she's finally getting out, uh, 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 I can't give it away. You got it. You got to see this movie. Uh, it felt like it was shot on film. It probably wasn't because, uh, of the expense of an independent film. You can't really shoot on film. Uh, it was probably shot digitally. I didn't look that up. Uh, but whoever the DP was, did an amazing job picking the, the LUT 
or uh, um, the uh, the amount of grain where it actually looked like 35 millimeter film, which I don't think enough movies do that this day. Um, one of my biggest complaints about modern day films is they're so crystal clear and 4K that they just don't even look like movies. They look more like video games. Um, this was not that film. It had that very raw, raw feeling. When I first put it on, I was at my mother's house. She was born and raised in Hell's Kitchen, New York. So, you know, a lot of times she's like uh, looking around because she knows Staten Island. She's look, she sees the bridges in the distance. Oh, I, I know that. I know that. My mom is just, she loved the film. Uh, so it was really good for me to watch the movie with my mother knowing, you know, and I grew up in Jersey City. So we're all very familiar with Staten Island. Uh, and fresh kills, you know, the landfill, all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, you know, Staten Island was was built on a landfill, basically. Uh, and long story short, see this fucking movie. Just see this movie. Just go on Amazon Prime and stream this film. You are not going to be disappointed. And movies like this is what we need right now. Uh, the runtime's only two hours, so it's not like these giant movies that go three hours now that just suck up all your time. Uh, the pacing was fantastic in this. And like I said, man, it's fucking character driven. You know, it's absolutely character driven. And I just, I can't start, stop bragging about this film. Uh, and go see the damn movie. Just go, go to Amazon Prime right now. Check out Fresh Kills. You are not going to be disappointed. And I can't wait to see what Jennifer Esposito does next. Because this movie, I wished it would have gotten a wide release. I was wanting it to come to my hometown. But it didn't. But damn it. This film should have been in every multiplex across the country. And I hope, for God's sake, it's making good money on Amazon Prime and it's getting its recognition, but you have to rent it. You have to rent this damn movie. Yes, I'm a cheerleader for independent film. I'm a cheerleader because a writer, director, producer, uh, Jennifer Esposito doing it all by herself without studio help, which probably is why it turned out so well, because there wasn't too many fingers in the batter. Um, a story about women told by a woman in a subject matter that's been covered tirelessly by Scorsese and many other people, uh, uh, HBO with The Sopranos and stuff that, but they don't, they don't, they don't grab it like this. They don't grab it like this. Rent it, Amazon Prime right now. Fresh kills.